Hey folks, uh, that was a new version of Splits at the End of the Universe, a demo that did uh, way back when before uh, a lot of the stuff was even working and I sort of re-implemented uh, uh, it in Splat in the last couple of weeks and did a run. That is a nine day simulation that we just looked at there at varying speeds of time lapse. And I wanted to use it today to talk about uh, cellular automata, uh, architectures um, and because the, there's a couple of things uh, that uh, are important about cellular automata that are, are widely used that I think are, are a little bit misleading and, and they cause trouble and so I, I thought it would be opportune time to kind of maybe go through one of them and that's the idea that uh, you know so a cellular automata is the spatially distributed array of computing elements that talk just locally to each other and the question comes up well what happens when you reach the edge of the array because there's going to be an edge somewhere and what typically people do is they wrap the east and west edges around and connect them to you so when you head out the edge uh, in one direction you come right back in the other way, uh, and the same thing with the north and south edges, you wrap them around, uh, uh, so you end up making, what, what if you, in your mind anyway, it's like a tube, and then the tube is connected to itself, so it's like a donut, it's a torus shape. And, you know, I, I've spent, you know, I spent years doing that sort of stuff as well. It makes a whole lot of sense. If you want to focus on the rules that a sort of individual little uh, agent, a little being is using in the middle of a vast expanse of open space, you don't want to have to care about special cases for the edges. Uh, um, but one of the things that has come home more and more clear to me uh, uh, over the years, uh, especially starting focus on indefinite scalability, the idea of, you know, this array might not be fixed. It might be this big now, but it might get bigger later. And we've seen some demos uh, uh, in the T-Tuesday updates where that is exactly what happens. The size of the simulated array, the size of the underlying cellular automata grows as the same thing is running. So... <clears throat> um, that's not the only problem that the donut architecture, the torus shape has. Uh, um, it, the other problem is, is that, you know, you say, okay, I, I just want to simplify things and focus on the main event. Uh, but the problem is, is that cellular automata structures, they often tend to grow. And in fact, we like it when they do, because it's kind of cool and a more complicated structure coming out of some simpler beginning. The problem is, once it grows to be more than the size <coughs> of whatever actual array you have, <coughs> Now part of its own structure comes back and starts running into itself. And an awful lot of the cool demos that you can see uh, in cellular automata land living on the donut, uh, what you're actually seeing, the importantly, what you're actually seeing is the pattern essentially interfering with itself as it goes around and around and does whatever it does. And that, in fact, that behavior would not happen in a real world array uh, that, you know, has edges or just keeps going on indefinitely as if that was possible. So one of the things that we've been doing seriously in the uh, T2 tile project is to try to be an advocate for edges. Edges are a good thing. Figuring out what your creatures, your beings, are going to do when they run into an edge is an inherent part of the system design. It cannot just be swept away as a minor detail. Sorry, no donut. And the splits at the end of the universe demo is meant to drive that home. You see, because the way it works, what we just saw, so you pick a random direction and a random color, and you just keep going in that direction as long as you can, as long as there's space at all, you swap with whatever is ahead of you. Uh, uh, and only when you actually get to the point where there's some kind of edge that you cannot go any further, you pick a new random direction, and you also pick a random neighbor around you, and if that neighbor is empty, you put a, you split. You make a new U with a new random direction, a new random color in this new version, and off it goes. And so if we had used the donut uh, architecture for splits at the end of the universe, what would have happened? We would have had one guy, one being, going around and around and around in whatever direction it went forever and ever and ever completely boring because it doesn't do anything unusual until it reaches the end of the universe. But instead, what happens here is 
The universe fills up solely as a result of interactions between the edges of the universe. And you get these long range structures uh, of, you know, picking, if you hit, go into a corner and you pick a random direction, if you head into a wall, you'll just bounce again. Or if you head into the other wall, you'll just bounce again. So there's only, no, you know, up and over and diagonal out that's possible. And you get these, you know, huge flows of traffic going in various directions. Uh, there's additional details on exactly how the colors work in this sort of thing and then of course you know <laughs> uh, uh, splits at the end of the universe sh eventually fills up all empty space the only way it fills empty space is when it gets to the edge of the universe it tries to pick a new direction and finds an empty site there so it gets slower and slower and slower as the universe gets more and more full but eventually in principle it would fill the last empty space and then everybody would just be moving around and swapping over each other till kingdom come Except not here, because uh, the simulation engine that we're using is still fragile. We've got to fix it. Okay. That's the, the rant demo <laughs> for today. Got a bunch of other stuff. Let's go fast. So, yeah, splits at the end of the universe, next generation. I'm going to uh, try to get an annotated version up on T2 demos before our next update. We'll see what happens. All right. We've got research, development, outreach. Uh, uh, the research front is, you know, uh, trying to rebuild the engine so that it won't be fragile in the way that we saw. That was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, the the splits at the unit, the a whole bunch of the grid would reboot because it got some. Well, not reboot. The engine would restart because it got some horrible error. But there was enough splitting at the end of the universe beans around to start reinfecting because the whole thing didn't crash at once. And they actually managed to survive by dodging and bouncing and dodging and bouncing. Anyway, uh, uh, at first I was thinking I could just use a GitHub branch, you know, a software thing to separate it. But it's hard because in addition to having a separate piece of software on one tile that I'm developing on, it's got to be able to spread to a bunch of other tiles in a little local neighborhood because the whole point of this is to work on intertile stuff. So what I thought I would do was I was going to make... Uh, a, a new key master the, the key master tile that we've seen it's the white one is the one that actually has the the crypto uh, private key on it so that it can generate uh, packages that will get uh, propagated by the common data manager out to an arbitrary grid and so the idea was you know i'm having a lot of fun running on the fragile uh, grid i don't want to give that up i don't i don't want to take the key master that we've got and nuke it uh, uh but i need to be able to nuke something so the idea was to create the blue key master because i had this nifty blue case uh, unfortunately i went through two tiles uh, installing them in the blue case before realizing that there's you know in permanent all kinds of little teeny bumps inside the thing that cause it to push down on the touch screen so the touch screen never works with the blue key master so that was the end of that brilliant idea instead we have the gold key master uh, uh, which hopefully, yeah, here we can see. So it's not even really gold. I just uh, used the gold uh, Sharpie pen uh, uh, to make it be gold. And the idea was is that this is going to be the one that we'll do the new development on. And the the old original key master, the white one, will just continue to be doing for demos and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, and, you know, my plan at first was just to have, you know, take the private key that uh, this guy was using and leave it there and then have put a different private key on the gold key master and otherwise let everything go through. But in fact, that turned out to be a problem. Uh, um, so uh, at first I was right. So I was just commenting out the, the name of the uh, old private key and inserting the new one gold key master, but that didn't really, that one didn't work because now, you know, I was only trying to change one package, you know, the MFM engine itself. But if I didn't have the original other key in it, then all the other packages were rejected during propagation. So what I really needed was to have two different uh, keys that would both be recognized, but have only one of them uh, that was on the gold key master and the white key master would not know about the other one at all. And therefore packages signed by the gold key master would not propagate. And it turned out, you know, I had actually implemented that. Uh, uh, you're right. So this was the problem that all the packages were getting uh, dumped because they had the wrong key. Uh, uh, but 
there was already support for having multiple key masters. So now we've got the T2 key master. That's the original one that the white key master is using. And the gold key master has its own separate one. Uh, um, and it took a few little places in the code to fix it up. But now it seems like uh, I can actually, you know, really uh, mess up the code. Uh, you know, so for example, I mean, so this one, uh, this is still running a huge gene because I haven't killed anything yet. Uh, but this guy... Um, right, he's running a splits at the end of the universe. All right, so see there he goes, bounced off, created a whole bunch. Uh, uh, splits at the end of the universe fills up space really fast because there's no no reason why it can't. It when it tries to bounce, there's lots of empty space, but then it immediately hits the wall, tries to create another one, and so forth. Uh, all right, we'll let these guys go. So. Uh, that is the research front. Uh, um, the development side of things, you know, it's just crazy. I'm, I'm, call, I'm calling the research front the software stuff at this point, and the, and the development side is, you know, working on the grid. Uh, um, you know, and last time when we built this uh, risers to support to, to bring the grid grid up higher, uh, uh, you know, uh, after I got it all set up, I slid it over into the corner, uh, into the position where it would actually go once there's seven lotuses but we only have two lotuses at the moment and so a couple of days later it was like in the middle of the night it was like saying well you know i want to set up to do another uh run with the with the camera see if i can get another good time lapse uh, i need to slide it back a little bit uh, uh so i slid it back a little bit and the pipe dropped out of the ceiling uh uh like that and the whole thing crashed and it was a mess uh uh it actually i don't know if you can really see it uh, it's it scraped up the uh, the bookshelf cabinets, multiple bookshelf cabinets as all this stuff came down. This was my uh, my my Kleenex box. Um, the Kleenex box got like basically sawed through by the edge of the hangers that had all those zigzag things on it, and 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 they got pretty well beaten up uh, as well. I mean, you know, I've got some of them here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they they just you know they shattered. Oh, like that. However, however, none of the tiles were damaged, as far as I can tell. They all booted. They all seemed to work. All the inner tile connections still make inner tile connections. The framework took the hit like it was supposed to. So that was nice. Uh, um, and, and this is what it looks like now. That whole upper right-hand corner, that was the part that slid down. Those things, they just got smashed. The, the, the connectors that go around, the hooks that go around the rod are okay. Uh, but there's a, the, the hangers are going to have to be uh, replaced. But it's been sitting like that. That, that nine-day run that we saw was like this with those hangers missing. So that's the development story. Oh. And then <laughs> it would be nice if this wouldn't happen again. So it was time for a little 3D printing stuff. Now, I mean, it could have been solved by, you know, just ordering a piece from the, the outside world. But why bother? It seems like I had the ability to do it. So I just, you know, made one of these little things up, printed it up. Uh, you know, maybe it took two or th I guess it took three tries. Uh, uh, and there it is. So it's just a little sleeve that goes around the thing and, and wangs down hard. That's, that's really not going to move. So that now, you, if you try to slide it to the left, the collar bounces off of the uh, upper the riser on the left hand side and keeps it from moving. If you want to go left, you've got to lift it up and go over. So now it's anchored in both directions. Hallelujah! All right, that's the development story. Uh, uh, yes, two updates ago, uh, uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> we all saw, uh, uh, I submitted a, the, this little science fiction story, Search Quiet Wake, to Asimov Science Fiction Magazine. Uh, they said, our average response time, five weeks. Uh, you should expect a quick response. And in the last update, I had this slide that it was under review, and I was saying, you know, expectation management probably shouldn't... Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, probably expect it's like, you know, not, not less than a 50% chance, you know, like it's odds off, you know, you got to be uh, prepared. Well, it was only a few days after uh, the last update that this arrived in the mailbox. Although it does not suit the needs of the magazine at this time, good luck. Uh, uh, so there it is. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that really kind of, it really kind of hurt. Uh, um, I had managed to convince myself that, you know, this is such a, you know, nifty little story and so forth. And, and you know, my, my big problem, of course, with talking about this at all, on the one hand, is, you know, it, it's all sort of pitiful and, and embarrassing from one point of view. But the other point is that, you know, my tiny, our tiny little community that we have here that's trying to do this stuff with folks that, you know, watch the videos, uh, come check it out, participate in some fashion or another. Uh, almost nobody's read the story. So it's really sort of, you know, okay, he's talking about another thing I still haven't had a chance to see. So I, I'm sorry about that. And I'm going to kind of shut up about it. I think after like today, uh, uh, uh we'll see how it goes. Uh, um, but, you know, I actually managed to convince myself that even though I said it was less than a 50% chance, I thought maybe it was like a 45% chance, you know. But the fact, you know, and looking around and seeing how these things actually tend to work, uh, the fact that it was like 17 days, like two and a half weeks, <clears throat> um, what, what that tells me uh, is that, you know, it didn't even make the second read cue. You know, apparently, you know, stuff that just comes in the front door uh, uh, you know, some, uh, someone reads, takes a look at them and gets rid of as many as they can. And only the ones that actually seem interesting in some way go on and get read again. And, you know, so, and again, I haven't really thought about this either, that, you know, the quicker the answer is, you know, the more likely it's going to be a no. So, you know, this was a pretty quick reply, uh, which I said I wanted, number one. And number two, you know, there was no feedback at all. Uh, the, except for the fact that they got the title of the story right. Uh, uh, you know, and I've had papers, scientific papers, rejected from conferences and workshops before and so forth. And I've participated in review panels that have rejected things, you know, and I know, number one, it's an incredibly noisy process. Uh, um, and uh, number two, it's just part of the game. Uh, but in this, at least in the scientific communities, you know, you're sort of obligated to say something. Uh, and a lot of times the reviews are, are pretty perfunctory and, and not all that informative, but they do exist. Uh, um, so that made me sad. Uh, I didn't even get to the level of a comment about why. <sighs> so, you know, I took my, my 72 hours of, of just thinking about other stuff. I uh, self-medicated with some shopping. Uh, um, and, you know, okay, so I got over it. Uh, um, going forward, uh, what I think I want to do is I want to try at least one more time. Uh, I can't have, you know, I can't let Asmovs beat me for, you know, just one outing. So the idea is, I think, Try one more time to actually send it someplace. Uh, um, and if, if still don't get any luck, then somehow self-publish. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that would mean. Uh, just put up on a website, Patreon, you know, make a little book out of it and put it up on Amazon. I don't know. Uh, uh, but we'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. Uh, um, and so what do you think? I mean, I could just turn it around and send it to analog, you know? or send it to the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, the top three. But, you know, nah, I'm thinking, you know, maybe that's a little bit, you know, embarrassing. Maybe an unpublished author with, you know, this crazy story that uh, is, you know, it, it, it's a little hard to get into. You have to be willing to uh, identify with things that you don't often identify with to really make it go. And then, you know, there are other structural uh, issues to it uh, as well. But, you know, here's the thing. I, I, <laughs> uh, uh, there's a bunch of things of, of venues, outlets for science fiction, that count as real. And if I get accepted by one of those, and, and there's a, a, a spectrum of them, uh, then I can become an associative associate 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 member of the science fiction writers of america the sfwa and you know <laughs> i've been part of professional associations as an academic over the years you know uh, engineering societies and scientific stuff and so on uh, um and you know they're they're good to some degree they're good for networking to some degree uh, uh and they're 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 kind of a racket to some degree as well but this would be a new racket, so I thought it would be fun to try to do that. So we'll see. So I'm kind of thinking maybe 
let analog, let magazine and fantasy and science fiction go and, and look for something farther down that still qualifies uh, as a publication uh, for purposes of the SFWA. What do you think? Uh, you know, <sighs> blinded by the dream. Uh, uh, you know, when I when I talk to other people and and I, I I'm kind of, at least if I'm not you know cranky for some reason you know I, I can sort of understand where people are coming from and 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 help see help people see things clearly but you know when it comes to my own stuff that doesn't work because you know I've, you know, I've got this dream that we can do a whole new kind of way of computing that would be more robust would be better for society it'd be you know more interesting it would be more uh, a better model for how we uh, uh, think and exist it would be all kinds of good things in principle, but it doesn't exist at all. And I'm trying to will it into uh, uh, existence. Uh, um, and I have been for, for decades now. Uh, um, and that means I don't have an accurate view of the world. I, you know, stuff that might work. I want to push the odds up and think that the odds are more than negligible and stuff that I don't like. I want to think, oh yeah, people are going to be figuring out that's a bad idea really soon now. And so this was a little reminder that, you know, the world out there is the world out there. Uh, um, and, you know, when you have a dream, that's what you sign up for. So it hurts sometimes. But, you know, I am uh, bent but not broken. We're going to keep on pushing. Well, we're not a full court press at this point. We're going to keep on pushing all the possible ways we can and see how far we go. So anyway, that's the outreach story. Uh, for this update and and I guess that is actually about it uh, um, uh, I f failed to welcome the nerds again these are the same goals uh, as as last time uh, you know have made progress the GDRO user space spikes uh, you know the path is now open to that because we have the gold key master and so forth I have got some other stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks in particular um, I'm gonna do a panel discussion uh, on self-organization. Uh, I guess, I think it might be one week from today, uh, uh, February 22nd. Uh, uh, I don't have the, all the exact details yet and so forth, uh, but um, it's associated with the, the guy, uh, Yosha Bach, uh, I think that's, yeah, that's the name, uh, um, who was the one who called me, you know, the Bob Ross of, computer models or something like that. So he invited me to do this thing, so I said yes. Uh, so we'll see. And uh, I've got uh, some scientific writing deadlines and stuff coming up early in March as well. So it's gonna get, it's gonna get a little busy for a while. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but I am enjoying being able to run these uh, uh, demos and uh, catch another one. I have a, a whole other one that I want to talk about, but I think I'm going to save it for uh, next time. Uh, um, and and so I'll stop here. And again, folks, thank you for uh, participating at whatever level you can. I hope things are, are going all right uh, with you. We're doing uh, uh, okay. And I hope to see you next time.